our break. So, um, what if? What if we do our little self-assessment, which we're going to practice? What if we do a self-assessment and we find out that we we're, we're not ready for whatever this new thing is, or we're not this this thing is not within our competence, or maybe something that we're already doing we realize is actually outside of what we thought we could handle, right? I have um, taken on clients before and then realized that actually there was a lot more to this than I thought. And now I need to reevaluate, am I the right person for this? So if you can, um, if you're doing this before you take on that case or that client or that task or that situation, then don't, don't take it on, right? If you can recognize that this is beyond where you are right now, at minimum, <laughs> delay and get some additional training or ref uh, refer out to someone else or find a mentor who can help you through if there's not an opportunity to refer out. That is something that we run into here in Alaska is that there might not be another option in your community. <laughs> there might not be a lot of options for this learner, or they may have already burned um, through a lot of those other services. So going somewhere else might not be an option, but before you take them on, you know, find somebody that can help you, find somebody that can mentor you, find some additional training that you can do to bring up your competence to then accept this client. Don't just wing it. That's not a good idea for, for services. Um, seek out additional training. So you've recognized that this is an area that I I didn't know, but now I know. I recognize that I don't have a lot of training in. I would like to so i will want to seek out some additional training um there are uh conferences there are tons especially this last year i think everybody has really embraced the online ceus online training um things so those of us in alaska are going to benefit because we don't have to fly down to lower 48 for everything anymore um or we don't have to wait for the once a year when they come up and do the Alaska training, right? So hopefully you can access some more trainings um, than previously, but, but seek that out. Read the relevant literature. So, you know, we talked about, oh, here's a name of somebody that's publishing stuff. That's a good place to start. Um, lit searches are a good place to start. I have it later as a reference, but um, it's, Oh, I don't know what it's called now. It used to be called the partnership. I think it's BA Research now. But every month they send an Excel spreadsheet with behavior analytic articles and the citations and a little bit of a summary and the link if it is open access um, for a whole bunch of behavior analytic journals that they follow and they send it to you every month. And I wanna say it's like $75 for the whole year. So I've been doing that for a while. It's great because then you can, you can skim an Excel spreadsheet and you can see where do I need to read? Which articles do I need to pull and, and figure this out, right? Where else do I need to go without necessarily um, having to read every, <laughs> journal yourself. Um, that being said, a lot of our professional organizations do have journals, uh, journals that you can get at a discount, journals that are included with your membership. That's also a good way because um, those journals tend to um, at least be representative of the organization and the organization's goals. So organizations that you're a member of, that's another way to access those articles as well. Another piece to this, um, and I'll give you a link to that, that resource um, a little bit later, um, but another aspect to this I think that is challenging and that comes up um, almost as an ethical decision-making process 
is maintaining those boundaries. Once you recognize that something is outside of, of where you are right now, that you have to um, develop the skill set to maintain that boundary, to express that to other people, and to tell people potentially no. Um, I have, uh, excuse me, I have declined to take on cases because there were factors that put it outside of my competence. And I told those people, I, I told those families the same thing. I would love to help you. Here's why I'm not the right choice. Here's who I think can help you. Um, you know, here's what I can offer that I think might help meet your needs. But what you're asking for, I can't provide that. But that's a hard conversation to have, especially if you have a family in front of you in person, nearly in tears because of their, you know, their story and, and how hard it's been and how maybe you're the only one that they've even been able to talk to. That's hard to then tell them, I, I can't, that's not me. And it's hard on the phone too. Just, it's hard in general to tell people I can't help you because that's why I'm in this field. <laughs> but that is a skill set too that you will have to determine <laughs> how, how fluent you are, how comfortable you are, how confident you are, but you will have to assess your ability to maintain those boundaries and then develop that skill set or avoid those situations that you know are hard for you to maintain your boundaries of competence. Now, there is also um, a uh, document. I think I found this from the website, but this was the actual citation from the BACB. Um, recommendations for re-specializing in a new ABA practice area. So they actually have some guidance. Again, just found it. Wish they had like made a bigger to-do about it when it came out. <laughs> but um, they actually have some guidance on if you want to go into a new specialization area what might you do? What might be some resources? I want to say it's on the same page as where it talks about the subspecialties as well, or that those two are both housed on the same page from the website. Um, so that's another resource. So I think the BACB is starting to kind of put out some more resources along this, um, but they're not making a big to-do about them, so they're sort of like flying under the radar. 